Welcome to JHS Weekly. I'm Alex Carson. And I'm Amy Amadon. Teachers at Franklin Technology Center are coming up with a new creative method of teaching. JHD's Darren Cropper takes us to the virtual side of education. Students in the construction class are getting a bit of experience for when they'll get on the construction site. Lauren Curtis is the teacher at Franklin Technology Center and it says that it's a cool modern way to teach. Two dozers and there are two excavators. It has the VR goggles on it so it gives you the 3D realistic view of what you're doing. But learning always starts with a blueprint. Students need to know how to use the controls before they learn construction. They learn how to uh, use all the controls and everything and when they get that mastered then they move on to certain things like digging a ditch, um, uh, filling up a truck, uh, putting dirt back or materials back in the ditch, and it gives them good controls, it's realistic. He even says the program paves a great path for them. Um, there's places around like in Arkansas, there's one down there, it's, a, it's an equipment school, or Lynn State, it's an equipment school, they can go up there and get that, and get all their certifications, and then from there they can move on and go get a job and go work in it. So it's pretty cool stuff, I'm excited, they're excited, it's a, it's a learning curve for us because we just got this last year, so now we're working on curriculums to understand how to process it, put it together, and that's the great thing about it. Mr. Curtis said that this will be a good chance for kids to improve their future, but what do the students think about the work? Student Adela Rohner says that even though she nailed her previous skills outside, it's inside is a whole new ballpark. Uh, it actually is a really cool experience. I run a real mini X, and so it really shows me how to do things in a different way, and it kind of helps me improve my skills, even though I've already got some. And and she says the experience will help her get better for her future. And it was really cool to get to learn this stuff because equipment is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And it's just a really good experience because I know how to run it and it's really helpful because it will be a good job in the future. The students plan to continue this program for several more weeks. Reporting for Jet HD, I'm Darian Crawford. Joplin High School and Franklin Technology Center are both upgrading. I had a chance to see the upgrades they are getting within multiple programs. 3D printer is just one of the many new upgrades at the high school. Levi Reed teaches advanced manufacturing at FTC and he says they will use it for all sorts of things. So the purpose of 3D printers is to, uh, well, I mean we can use it for all types of stuff, mainly just to build plastic parts. It can be parts that you want to use in everyday life or it can be like a prototype for something. By using the 3D printer, they are saving a lot of product and money. If we want to make something, we can 3D print the part out, make sure it's going to work first before we actually waste material. The 3D printer can benefit a program, but how do they make things from the 3D printer? We learn how to do the drawings, we learn how to convert it to G-code, and then we learn how to set up and operate the 3D printer. But like all humans, we make mistakes, so this allows them to experiment. So it allows us to make mistakes and not have to worry about damaging or ruining our big machines. Kellen Conway is a student in Steven Spratfield's computer networking class, and he has created a website for the school so everyone can log in to use a 3D printer. It would, um, it would really just open a lot of opportunities um, for everyone around, especially people at FTC. Communication isn't always easy, especially in a huge school, so having this website would benefit us all need something 3D printed, but you know we have our 3D printers and so we have all this back and forth and so we really just make it very much easier. Creating this website for the 3D printer hasn't been easy and it takes a lot of time, but how long has it taken Conway so far? Three months, four maybe? Even though they just got a 3D printer, they have been using this process for a while, but how long ago did they get the 3D printer inside their classroom? A few days ago, about a, a week or so, uh, which is actually what's been halting most of our process. The school is still upgrading and projects are still in session. They aren't cheap. They average a little more than 4000 Reporting for JHD, this is Amy Amadon. JHS Administration selected the Student of the Month for January. These students were selected based on their leadership, and the freshman class is Margita Boaz and Ella Pagan. The sophomores are Landon Mathis, Sophie Krumsick, and London England. The juniors are Abigail Lowry, Ian Trejo Cervantes, and the seniors are Anna Barnhart, Emma Spritz, and Olivia Riddle. 
Congrats to them. Congratulations to these winners. Getting student of the month is a really big accomplishment. Yeah, and you got it in December, so I'm very proud of you. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. Some strange infestations have been waddling into classrooms around Joplin High School. DedHD's Noah Newman investigates the growing number of ducks in classrooms to see if he can quack the case. A new epidemic is starting to spread throughout Joplin High School, and it is nothing to quack up about. Tons of tiny plastic ducks have been scattered all across Joplin High School, and art teacher Seth Wolfshorndel has been a victim to this strange phenomenon. My first clue that there was something going on was when a couple showed up in my classroom and I just sort of was like, where did these ducks come from? Just kind of in random spots in my room. And, and then uh, one of my students told me that she was one that actually left them in there. But then she told me that I wasn't the only one, that there was other classrooms this was happening to. And a lot of them got a lot more ducks than I did. Wolf Shornell got a much more minor side of this flock of ducks. But science teacher Daniel Gilbert, however, has his feathers ruffled with a much larger scale of ducks in his class. So, I don't know when it first started, but ducks started showing up a little before Thanksgiving. Sort of finding little ducks all throughout the room. I found them everywhere. I found them uh, behind things, up on like counters. I found them kissing in between my stapler. So, even locations like that. Gilbert, however, has found his own way to take care of this duck infestation in order to get back at the mischievous group of students behind it. I don't like cuteness, and these little cute ducks kept showing up everywhere, and so I would take them and I would take a pair of pliers and cut them up in front of the classroom. So kind of a daily thing where they would, I'd find them and cut them all up and put them in a bottle. But despite these measures, Gilbert doesn't see these ducks as a disruption, more so as entertainment for both himself and his students. A lot of times it just adds, you know, excitement to the room, gets kids to pay attention. I would, during test, I would play the Five Little Ducky song just to annoy the kids. So why are the ducks being placed in the classroom? I tried to interview the anonymous students, but they wouldn't go on camera. So, uh, I guess just chalk it up to foul play. Reporting for JHD, this is Noah Newman. So, Alex, do you think he quacked the case? I think he did. I've seen those ducks around the school, and I've been wondering about them, too. I haven't seen them anywhere around the school. They're all in my classes. Oh. Maybe you just got to keep your eyes out. Maybe. Maybe. This has been JHS Weekly. Thanks for watching.